Dies Marie was far to arrive. We are here today in Liskaragain on this wet and windy summer day, uh, where Antar Padre Olera was born in 1839. And this is the house where Antar Padre was born. His uh, earliest memories he recalls in Mushkir Fain that he was in the arms of some woman as a child. He couldn't remember who she was. And from inside the door, he was able to look across the valley here, and he could see uh, Kahari and Dove, which is over here on the right, and he could also see to the left here the hill of the Ralea. Over here now in front of us we have the road that Antahar Padre refers to in Mushkel Fain, the road from Cooing in the Hihilan, the corner of the Haggard, to Barnare. And right there at the top of at Barnare on the right corner was the site of the house where Peg in the Krisha lived. That wonderful old lady that he used to call to see and chat with. Uh, by the way, she didn't have one word of English. Uh, now we will come back to the house to commit an Ashkodi and Tig in Rogantar Padar. And the centenary of his birth was commemorated here with a plaque on the wall where the gr group of people uh, commemorated his, the centenary of his birth. Agasanish Raymid Ishtak Konbula Lebanati. We will meet the woman of the house, Mrs. Mara O'Riordan, who is the present occupier of this house, and her son, Sean. And here we have Mara Reardon, a boy. Conostanto. We are here now in the kitchen where Antar Padre Olera grew up as a child, and where he tells us in Mushkir Fein uh, in Good Morning, Mr. Saunders, where the landlord or his agent came in here and sat in the middle of the floor, and the people gathered in, and where he was questioned if he had meat for his, his, his dinner recently, and he answered that he had a bit of a goose a long while ago when it was Christmas. It was also here in this kitchen, presumably, that his mother taught the children and taught him English and taught him French. His mother had attended school in Killarney and had been taught French there, and she later taught school with her brother near Kenturk, where she taught French and English and he was taught by his mother here before he went to Carrigan in the school. Now we have here with me, I have here with me, uh, Sean O'Hakirum from Macroom, uh, and especially Mara O'Reardon, Vanity and Sir. Uh, Mara, it was your father who bought the, the, this place from the O'Leardons. That's right, Jerry, yes. Uh, have you any idea <coughs> what year that would be? In 1911. 1911, yeah. so that would be nine years before the entire father died. Um, what was the name of, uh, who did he, who did they buy from? My father uh, uh, lived in Daniel's Clark, that was the home place of the O'Shea's, and he bought the farm from Patsy O'Leary, a brother of the Cannon. A brother of the Cannon, yeah. yeah. And uh, why, why do you think, was he a married man, was Patsy O'Leary a married man? Yes, he was a married man, he was married to uh, Margaret McSweeney from Gersenatra. Yeah. And my grandfather in Daniel's Clark, was married to her sister, Mary McSweeney. So, so you, you, you are actually... Well, I'm not connected to the, with the canon, but to, uh, to, to marriage, to yes, marriage, that's yes, right, yes. yes. But uh, did, did he have family, this man? <laughs> yes, he had, um, he had uh, uh, three, three sons and two daughters. Yeah, and and have they, uh, they, where are they now? What? Well, uh, one of the, I believe that one of the sons then, when my father bought the farm, one of the sons bought a farm in Castle Island. In Castle Island. Yes. Yeah. And they all went to live there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But, Mara, this, this house now roughly coincides to the house in which uh, Antarapad was born, but I presume it has changed enormously since. Oh, yes, I would say so. I'd say it was a long, low house. 
They're probably the same length and the same structure, but low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now there's also <coughs> here, here where he talks of Mishkir Fein, of uh, Padre Gobukul and Kosh and their two children. That is somewhere here close to the house, is it? Yes, that's right. right. That's uh, they're actually in the field in front of the house, in a corner of that field. The, it seems to say that it's. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you, you will have read the story in Mushkir Fein and in the English translation, my own story, of Padre Gobukul and Kosh and their two, two children. That was Sheila and Dermidine. Sheila was a young little girl, and Dermidine was, was, was just a couple of years old. And the famine came, and they had to go to the poorhouse in McCroom. And when they went in there, the father was put with the men, the mother was put with the women, the uh, Sheila was put with the girls, and little Dermidine was put with the, with the younger children. Uh, they both, the two children, died in the poorhouse. And their father and mother helped in some way that they had died. Now, the, the, it was a horrific experience because when the people died, they were just thrown in mass on the horse cart and brought to Karagastaira where they were buried in a mass grave. When they heard that their children had been buried in Karagastaira, they decided they would leave the poorhouse. And Cart was suffering badly from the fever and uh, Padre was, was very, very weak. And they came as far as Karagastaira and they stood over the mass grave of their children and they cried their eyes out. And then they moved on from there, and Sean, you have an account of what happened after that. Well, they moved on from there, <coughs> and his wife became so weak that he had to carry her on his shoulder until the rest of the remainder of the journey. The poor man himself was weak enough. It would have been hard on him to put the journey by him without having any load. With the load, he was often forced to stop and to leave his load down on the ditch of the road for a while. But whatever weirdness was on him, he continued to put the journey by him. He did not part with his load. He reached the cabin. The cabin was cold and empty before him, without fire and not heat. The morning after, some neighbour came to the cabin. He went inside. He saw the pair there, and they both dead. And the feet of the woman in Patrick's bosom, as if he had been trying to warm them. It was seen that he had felt the weakness of death coming over Kit and her cold feet, and he put the feet into his bosom to take the cold from A very, very sad, very sad tragic story indeed. Um, we also have in this locality, we have, we have uh, uh, at uh, Barn Ray Cross, yes, where, right. where on the right, I believe, Peg Patricia had the house. Yes, that's right. And to the left, there was, there was the story again of the famine where um, uh, Lauras and uh, Mara Rua lived in a house there to the west of the cross, a little bit. Yes, that's right. And uh, the famine came and Mararua, he, on that father had Mararua himself telling of how she sat all day crying when she saw the blight coming on the potatoes and when she saw the stalks withering and the leaves falling because she knew that tragedy was ahead of them. Uh, when they had finished whatever food they had in the house, um, Lou Ross, uh, was affected by the and became inflicted with rheumatism and was confined to bed. And the sad story is that Mara Rua walked each morning, fasting, across the hills westwards to Kledach, where she got a little container of milk and walked home and arrived home about evening, still fasting, and boiled the milk until it, be it became curds and whey. And she gave the curds to Lauras and she drank the whey herself. And that continued under such time as Lou Ross died. So that is just some of the tragic and sad stories of the famine in this actual area. Now we now come to Sean O'Hahirn, Master uh, You were involved, Sean, with the, the centenary commemorations of Antahar Pader in McCroom and in here. Could you tell us? That's happened? right. Well, I became involved in them because I attended the evening classes in the vocational school run by Mr. Eamon O'Horagain from Pross. And he was a very keen Irish speaker and a very, very great guy. And I was a member of the committee that was responsible for the erection of the plaque here and the one on the bridge in McCrone in 1939. I was also involved in the celebration of the centenary of his death in, in, in 1970. We held an area in the castle grounds and that on, the, on a Sunday evening in August. And I have a photograph of the committee involved in that 
and uh, that committee involved in the, in the yes. organizing of that area and the, the commemoration that was said that yes. we had some famous people there, Marnie Christie was a violinist from Limerick and uh, such people as Seamus and Wayne Coyne, Seamus O'Shea, Bill and Greig, and Sina Kmeon Paddy Moxing, Cole and his two daughters, uh, Michal and Marco who had a, in a marriage secondary school in Baton Gary, uh, so the other more famous already, and Gar Canning. There's some of the people who see the photo, I'll show you, you'll get the photograph later on in the, uh, yes, the yes, program. Yes. Uh, Maureen, did you say that there used to be some <coughs> special area of theatre at one time? Yes, I would say for um, up to six or seven years. They held a fish every second Sunday in August in the field just in front of this house. Yeah, would that be on, on Fox in the mother than That's right, that's right, yes. that's right. Yeah. And uh, how, how long did that continue? It lasted for about five years. Yeah, and who was the last one? Who was the last one? I would say uh, probably um, about 1938 or 39. Probably when the plaque was unveiled, probably there was uh, a fish there that Sunday. I yeah. can't yeah. really remember. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, another aspect is that we're, we're privileged to have some of the furniture that was that Antar Pather would have used in his time in this house. And that has been donated by Mara here uh, to the museum in Kilmurray. And we we go and have a look at that furniture now. Have you done egg this egg years more than here were? But it's a question on our father and son. And we have here now the curator of the museum here in Kilmory, Mrs. O'Sullivan. Uh, Mrs. O'Sullivan, thanks very much for having us. Uh, when was the museum founded? The museum was founded 1964. We had a historical society here. We still have, and we decided we try to keep something like yeah, yeah. for heritage. Yeah. We first of all we cleaned up all the graveyard up there, old stones and straightened them up and everything. There was a lot of young students around here at the time, all our families were in school. And then uh, Brother Allen of O'Connell Schools in, uh, in Dublin. Dublin, who was a native of New Stone, oh, he used to come yeah. to us every summer. I mean I grew up alongside of him. And uh, he said to start a little museum. Very good. And we Very decided good. He gave us the idea how to start it. He gave us a few things on loan because he had a beautiful museum in all kinds of schools so, himself, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, He's yeah, now dead, lost yeah. of measures in him. And we had no house. And then you had John Gallivan next door, very generously put this house at our disposal. Very good. And we went on from there then. Very good. Everything we have in this museum was donated to us. Very good, yeah. Why, why Mr. O'Sullivan, did you have a room, a special room, Kishton and Ahar Pader? Well, we, later we got that idea, well, within the first year, we, we heard uh, Dan Holland, who was our treasurer at that time, he told us about, uh, about Mrs. O'Reardon and about the, the old home of Anthar Pather. And at that time it was being made a national monument, and like yes. they were putting yes. up this plaque. And we decided we'd ha look for the furniture we had the hope of getting, because there were several other people who would have been yes. glad of it, like the but of course, brothers and all those. Yeah, he had a car as a court in that case, because Absolutely. Dan Holland <laughs> is married to a first cousin yes, of... Right. Yeah. That was it. So, Mara, Mara you, you would show us around here now the furniture that w was in Antar Pather's house at his t at that time. And where do you start with this? Uh, or the table well, here, yes. yeah. supposed to be the table that was there when Antar Pather lived in the Skirgan. We we'll go on to the clock. That's the actual clock. That's the actual clock. Then the dresser. That's the actual dresser. Yes. That is there. Yes. You have the settle. <coughs> you have the settle. And it seems that was the original settle because when my father bought the farm from the O'Leary's, all that furniture was left in the house. Yes. And the crane, uh, for the fireplace as well. Oh, the crane here, here behind, yes. Yes, the crane and the, the, all the little iron. The hoop. And the tevy, as it was called at that time, yes. over the fireplace. But that is, we didn't get that one. No, but oh. the... Um, that we got one in each. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
That's very, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, how, how did the furniture survive? Uh, I suppose it was sturdy furniture and it was... Well, I suppose it was strong furniture. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. well, I don't think it would have survived with me <laughs> if, the, if the museum hadn't taken it. Yeah. We do, just the same. I suppose it's very good old timber. Yeah. We put a lot of preservatives on it, yeah. and I hope whenever her wishes it out of here, our life has gone on then. Very good, yeah. Now, uh, what have we over here now in the war? We have, we have um, a letter in the handwriting one third pader where he's writing to a priest. No, she was a teacher. A teacher, is it? Writing to a teacher. Sorry, you, you're yes. from over here, Mr. That's, that's the specimen of his handwriting, a page of a letter written to uh, a Miss Murphy. What was she was not? She was Breed Murphy, yes. a native of Donisky. And uh, our yes, domestic. And uh, she was a school teacher at that time. She later became an inspector of schools, and that is a specimen of a tender. Oh, yes. And the map adjoining that now, the map is um, a map of Liss Caragon, his townland and the farm, made by Mr. Molka. He was a county engineer at the time, and attached to the Kinsale Museum. And every little part of uh, every field now in Michigan Sea, in Park and all those are mapped in that. Yeah, just if we could get a little bit closer. Here. Yeah. And we have, uh, this is the actual house here on, 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 on a hat Yes, that's it. Yeah. And you have the Shanamaka, the, the, the field outside here where you used to have the, the, the terrible exploits with the gander. With the, yeah. And we have Karagin uh, Arayr here, on Knuk Bui. Down there, Malachanish, uh, Coralia over here, and Derelia. And we have, oh, Kaharin, Kaharin Dove, that's what we were saying this morning. When he looked out the, the door, he saw Kaharin, mm -hmm. and, he, and he saw he saw Derelia. And of course, we have up here, we have, we have the road, the bridge there, up the road to uh, Barnare. Oh, no, and here you have you have Teg, Teg Fegna Krisha, and uh, Teg Mararu. We talked about Mara, uh, Mararu and Loras this morning. That's very interesting. That's it now. Uh, yeah. who, who made that map, did you say? Uh, well, this is Michael. He's a he, retired engineer now. He was the engineer, a county engineer back then. Oh, yeah. And he was attached to the Kinsale Museum. Uh, yeah. He often come here, very often, yeah. And he always looks for his map. But I have I have another couple of copies. I got two or three copies at him when I got used. Uh, yeah, very good. Yeah. Anyone else yeah. want to? Uh, and what are we over here then? We have... We have um, a picture of one tower pattern. A picture of one yeah. yeah. And here next then we have. Next is descendants of his sister. Yeah. They are O'Leary Morphys from the from America. Now in America they were well of course the, the, the old lady herself is no longer. But one Saturday evening here a young woman arrived here with two children. A very wet Saturday evening, and uh, she had been told about the museum and about Empower Pathers furniture and uh, she, I was here luckily and she was very wet and cold and everything and I sent her back to our chairman to get a cup of tea. She didn't know the RE but she was trying to make a way to clown it. And uh, she went there and after a while another lady and her family arrived from Cork and she said she was a grand niece of Empower Pathers also. And well I said that's a strange coincidence telling her about this lady. And uh, she, I said, just wait a moment now, and I'll send one of my boys over around the road there back for her, tell them to call again. So she, they, when they called, then they got to know each other and who their mothers were, or such as it was, and they be, they became great friends. Instead of going on to Killarney, then she went back to Cork with that lady from Cork, from Friars Walk, and uh, she spent a week with them. And when she returned to the States, she sent us that picture Nicely good. framed and all, just as it is. Very good. That that then is is Antar Pader's sister. That that, that is that she. Yes. Yeah. That is she. Yes. Yeah. And when the caption here, is the photo of sister and family of the late Canon O'Leary presented to the museum by her granddaughter Louise Burgard of Massachusetts. Yes, she was married to a German, and he had been killed on the street in oh, America. That, oh yes, yeah. It's very good. Very good. Is that the lady herself there in the white frock? That's the lady that was here. The, the lady, lady that came the down the sitting down low, yes. Yeah. 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 You could have this person, but you're going to put it going. Because
Uh, we are here now in Carrigan, the Mehwer and Tahar Pader, all there uh, attended church and uh, the sacraments. And uh, the school where he attended uh, was at the, uh, on the site of the priest's house there over. Uh, we have an old photograph of that to come up now. Time to trace tracks and is shock hard again. Emma, I guess time to shake and so much trauma. I guess time to dear go score T and the vanak and tear pader no revive she dollar score and so much trauma. I guess and so ignore the gum ta shine or she dinner the the winter and tea and so I guess no she doing Maria or hush mahari I guess the dinner we have no grimish. We have reached my room and I am now at the house of John O'Shea who uh, where father where entire Padre O'Leary stayed when he was attending school in McCroom and now John will tell us about his family well um, my father's father was um, Do uh, Corey O'Shea and my father's name was Donal yes. and his father was Johnny O'Shea and Johnny O'Shea was the man where entire Padre's house he stayed in and he formed um, the business here, or yes. mineral water business. He started it up from nothing, and uh, he had a son in turn. He passed it down to his son, Corey. And he had a son as well in in, do in the form of Donald, my father. Yes. yes. And in turn, my father has passed it down to me. My father passed away there a few years ago, and uh, he in turn passed the business down to me, which we continue on again today. Yes. Um, the business is some 110 years old. Yes. Founded in 1873. 1873, yes. And um, it's 
his family run off us down through the years. And you're still and able to cope with the, co with the competition and it's fairly stiff now. It's fairly it? stiff now. It is, it's fairly stiff. You still keep you on the tradition. We have to move with the times as they say, yes. moving up. The, things are more modern. But um, at the last we're able to keep our head over water and we're, we're proud to be able to keep our business going yes. here today. And you got very married very recently. That's right. I'm married very very well. We congratulate you and wish you every happiness. Thanks. And uh, I should mention too that it, it on Tar Paddle's book does mention that while Canon Peter O'Leary as a boy stayed here in this right. house, he was he never was charged, he never was asked for a penny. That's payment. right, that's yes. right. And yes. they were always proud yes. to, to relate to that to that yes. fact. And the family were always in, in, involved in the cultural life of the town. That's right. Your that's right. Your late aunt Lord Merson was very prominent in the musical society. Yes. That's right. Yes. I know, I know and she is. Yes, and with the letter that you're carrying on the business and we wish you every success. Thanks very much for now. Thanks. Thanks. Tom Edinson is Laura Droy de Macrama. Arten of Will Lee Queen to Erin Ar Pader. The Togo Gundisha and Edig Trucane, a Queen of Khan Er Kedblin Er Lavrehe. The Togo Gundia saw on a scoggin bad fee Queen Er Haroder Nanogelge, Shishin, and Tar Pader or Lera Kanonok. A Rogo Gurlis Cargoin, a Barosha Clundroid, Lord de Macrama. Emlin er mila och jag tror kan jag. Kanske inte har jag inte bunden kanske in när vi inte ska längre in att kanske träffa en vaklin. Den nokta kan lysa är en dehollad av en år när jag tror kan jag. När han är en tärpäder och ska jag inte med glimma kramet vi ser ska jag dusch en montör där bända med hal wall. Och sen sen de vilka sin gröksa går de inte ska längre. August Sons Kalangan saw an echoing, August Raimichi Snish Condition Distant. We are here now in the middle of the bridge in Macroom, where you see this this um, memorial to Antar Pather. It was quite close to this, he went to the Netton School, run by McNally. And we shall go down there now and show you the, the, the location of the school where it was at that time. We are now standing on the exact location of McNally's Latin School, which is under the castle, as you see. But the entire pattern is book Mishkiel Fein gives a very accurate description of the school, of this school, and the steps down to it, and the doors into it, and up the steps again. And then he tells us that there was a window looking out on the salon, and the window was just here on our left. And as you see, the salon is just flowing by the window where he was in school. When the McNally school closed, there was a second school in Massetown run by Trelock Golden, Ter uh, Terry Golden, and he attended that school for about a half year before going on to Kenturk. We are now in the centre of Massetown, but we are not sure of the location of Terry Golden School. Some say it was behind numbers 13 and 14, which are just at the very end of your picture, and more say it was nearer to us here on the left where the grey car is, but as I say, we are not sure of the exact location of the school, but it was behind these houses on the left. I'm a dear Ganesh Ibn Shrader Kashlain. I got stressed no going dear, never done for a week and skull for on for on a key and if I got time it attacked the niche for the museum time some trauma.
Hamid and Sonish, dear Ekdors and Museum, Mugget's Bull to be the Shrak on Fiak and Kazas Fazling Eskin to stick and so. This is Mrs. Desmond, who is the present curator of our museum, and with her is Mr. Mihal Odingi, and a member of the Committee of the Historical and Archaeological Society, who are in charge of the museum. Mrs. Desmond, you haven't very much about Antar Pather in this museum. Very little. As Kilmurray Museum opened before us, and they have got the furniture of Antar Pather's kitchen, but we have got a window railing yes. here of the Bridewell. Yes. Here we see a picture of the window guard of the Bridewell. This is the caption underneath the window guard of the Bridewell. Perhaps the most notorious prisoners of this jail were the McCarthy brothers and their comrades in 1799. This was the period of the White Boys, an organisation of peasant rebels whose target was the landlords and the big houses of the area. One such incident involved Codrum House on the Killarney side of McCroom, which was raided by a band of White Boys from Balmagree. 12 and all under the leadership of one Malachy Duggan. It was the intention of the raiders not to harm the occupant, a kindly man named Robert Hutchinson, but to procure money or arms. Colonel Hutchinson, however, was awakened by the raiders and coming to the top of the stairs called Cormac McCar McCarthy by name. Duggan, realising that their disguise had been discovered, shouted out the command, McCarthy, do your duty whereupon McCarthy fired his blunderbuss and killed Colonel Hutchinson. A reward was offered for information leading to the capture of the raiders. When it reached £300 and pardon for the informer, Duggan, who had been arrested on suspicion, decided to inform. Six men, including the McCarthys, were hanged in the square in McCroom. Their heads were cut off and stuck on spikes on top of the bridewell, where they remained for many years. People in the market square would cover their heads to protect against pieces of decaying flesh and hair floating in the wind. You will remember in his book, on Par Pader mentioned the three Lirodi Bjoga, a Chonikshe on Rod, and these three Lirodi were the skulls of the three McCarthy brothers that were on high spikes on top of the bridewell, and our next stop will be at the bridewell itself. The tall building you see in front of you, which is now McGregor's Furniture and Carpet Stores, was the Bridewell, where the McCarthy brothers were imprisoned. And it was on top of this building the spikes were on which were the heads of the three McCarthy brothers, referred to as the Tridi Hodi Bioga in entire Pathers Mushkielfe. Just here where the, you see the tree near the bank was where the gallows were erected and where they were hanged. Tom it forced us rather cash line. No more took their fado, came with right leg. I guess Trasna and Vohoroing came to on Gigerl Boutique. Is an son of Honig, Padrigo Crowley, Graven Tanim Tete Gwellen and Gwellen, Phila Agus Grinor Gwellen, Agus Savisha in the Ochtaran, the Stolgar Bian Ked Ochtaran, Er Gaivskal Mosgri Elaine. Shinskal Felichta, Agus Tan Shid Lakela Urs of Lien, the Gole, Agus Lien Shid the Dante Takum Hokal Lien and Us, Agus Dinta Tafadora.
Shana Fictur, the Kashlan Vakrom, a shat and Fictur Shah, a Kurgaglo in Irish American Magazine in February of nineteen eighty nine. Nifalon Fictur on the Arsem or the Span and Shay on Tevala, the Chomera in the Mikantar Padder, August on Ingyog, Trina Reaksha Mark Aaron Salon. This picture is interesting because of the fact that when it was taken, one of the side walls of the room in which the entire Pather studied still remained, and the, the window is quite clear here where he looked out on the river Salon flowing by the window. Tommy and Sonish, a dig on our approach to the Clondrohead, Shishin, and Tahir Obreen, the Wallemacher and Hanegiv. Tatu with Hagar Proste, er, Haroste, and Starola Fadahir. Tahir, Nagus Pawalaminish, Rod, er, Le, a Hashbantus, and Laur and Clar in a will, Korshir, Sir Bashton, a Halpather Fane. Agus Rod on him only, Agus Mar, Maris Federlet Eskind, Ta and Laur, a Straka as a Kela Hanefenak, Marshin Fane is Feder and Anim. Eskint and Shin Higgis. I was Lea made even ish Rodder Tash Grief and Saw. This page covers the year 1839 and the month of April. And on the 30th of April was born Peter, son of Jeremiah Leary and Johanna Leary. And the sponsors were Barnabas Leary and Eliza Leary of Liscarragon. Tasha is not a hymn or a father, I guess Tommy, and a work that he has been doing. The Spanish are doing Gwil and Dauta Gertigling and Dauta Erbashtig and Tahir Pader, I guess Gombe Castleto Hri. Slani got the niche. Slani got the niche. I guess I guess can I read the list? Tommy Tuggenish got the Carrigan style. Unlike the other Tuggen, it is a clear, more curious, a full boss in Gorton. We have now reached Carrigan style, the graveyard in which were buried the victims of the famine who died in the. Poor us in McCrome and also on the banks of the Salon, which we will see later on. The cross you just saw was erected about 50 years ago, and at the request of the McCrome Historical, Archaeological and Literary Society, Mass is celebrated in this graveyard each year about the middle of June, and we are very grateful to the parish priests of Clondrod who initiated and continued this practice. It is very well attended each year, and we feel a very, very particular atmosphere here because everybody buried here is undoubtedly a saint. They were victims of the famine and victims of oppression and we are sure that they are all looking down on us from heaven at the moment. We have now reached the situation where the old workhouse was built. This is all that remains of it, this building here. The cottage hospital, as you see in the picture, was built much later. The um, workhouse was born in 1922. The workhouse was a hated institution by the Irish and it was a shame if you had to go in there. And for that reason, many of them were born after 1922. When intensified, the workhouse became overcrowded and people arriving there could not be accommodated. And they walked on Bornus up and they came down here by the left and bank of the river and they lay down there against that 
fence as that you see in front of you, and they remained there until they died. Each morning, men arrived with a truck, and anybody that wasn't moving was thrown into the truck and taken as far as the workhouse, and those who died during the night in the workhouse were also thrown into the truck and taken up and buried in a mass grave above in Corrigastire. This is a very fine fishing river, and across the other bank we should be visiting a place called the Pigeon Fields, and here on the front view you see the Protestant church. We'll continue on from that. This is the Protestant church taken from the Pigeon Fields. The Pigeon Fields was a village green in the olden times, and it was here the first fish under Conor was held on the 1st of June, 1889. And a play by an entire father called the Klieg was also staged here, the first play ever staged under Conor Nagerling. This field was the play field where the sports took place, and I haven't seen any Gaelic matches here because they were played in the castle grounds, which had been handed over to the people in 1922, but I saw hockey matches and rugby matches played here, and this was also the venue for the annual sports. This is the McCrone Boys Secondary School, opened in 1960, 1933. The plaque here tells us the story. It was opened in, in 1933 and was redesigned and extended in 1983 by the, the parish priest, very Reverend, Right Reverend Monsignor D. O'Connor. And the man who was there when it was first opened was very Reverend Canon Barrett. We have now come to back down onto New Street or Bohornes up, and here we see before us the birthplace of another very famous McCroom writer and dramatist, T. C. Murray. D. Murray, did you see over the door, was his brother's name, Daniel. In this year he was born. He was trained as a national teacher and taught in many schools in Cork, and eventually as principal of the model school in Inchicore in Dublin. Hamid Trish Takten Sanish of a Chroma of Gathamid Gian Tirk. Noradonog and Skalavik Trela Kogali of Machrama, Marbisha Dalamakri Donog Moor, Kan Bukuli Dalavud and Skalartis Jacari Kolash Kalmine, Nirvian Skal and Son of a Chroma of Gashanik and Tar Pader and Sagri Gian Tirk, Art and Nakashir Skal, Agus Nosig and Tara Trih Egwing, Nish Mariolar and Sagan Tirk. Well, there are many things that are happening in the world. There are many things that are happening in the world. There are many things that are happening in the world. There are many things that are happening in the world. There are many things that are happening in the world. There are many things that are happening in the world. There are an night in a raven skull. A shock on this night in an ish and so in a killer stride in a tra, a gun turk. I guess it's tough, it's digginson, lana show, a night in a will on a new york, glinia and son, I guess, and Doris glinia and son, also are going. Dertor, grandson, no, then right as Nadine, grandson of Ian Skull. Der Dinele, grandson, a Watergate Street. A wie een schone skuil. Daar tegen zo nog eens door het sterker. Als je te veel dent dent hier zien, dat er graf stabiele aan. Nou, niet heen onen nog wil je onvoors, maar niet graf komen er over. Nu weer een teher pader de loon. Ze ze willen mij lekker mij lokeren als ik er gehoord. Als niet een rind een schone stabiele vaag en is. Als dat er graf stag, maar zo een wie ze. Ich dachte, ich lerne schon hier, hier ist er ein Skull. Aber ich darf hier das nicht hier, ich die ganze Zeit. Wie trotz mir, Vater, die Däne wegen der Herr Pedro, gehe ich in der Lade, der Skull. Dort ist ein Griff, der drei Wiele nur mal schien. Ach, der Regel ist dann, er liegt, dass er kuig Wiele, 
or Rir in the Mona, Gokion Turk, Tamid in Sahinish, in the Mona, and I in a run, and Tar Padder, a Lemuintri Lere, Agassis is in Sinatra, a Via Tig, a Muintri Lere, Tar Tig, a Bra and Shahinish in the Mona, a Tig Corn, a Muintri Lehein, Nadina Town, Filahir, Ach Dano, Togok and Tig Shins of Lean, a Mille, a Nigad, Agassa Hock to Stolium. Ach tevhir de shin she vi an shane hig ti kion ti vi on agus vi she hir an sun sanait an ishin a willan an shan ti gan shun an sun so on vi muin tri leir in a chani nor vi an tar pader fan un plo an so agus a dollar skoil go kion turk. Hamid and Sonish Kalash the Galashta Kalmoin and Manistrar Mui, Trish Takto, Hyon Tirk, is in Sahanigan, Taher, and Kanona Kalira, Erskoil, Trish of Kyonter Dagan, August Nosigan Taher, or Korkret on the Olivan, so doing Maria Rotation, so Manistrar Mui. Golamagur Hyan, August Falter Road. Ontar Pazel came here in 1859. He came here with a friend of his, a Balaburni boy, by the name of Max Sweeney. And at the time, of course, there were boarders here, but some adopted the method of lodging in the town and coming here as day pupils. Yes. Now, Antar Pather uh, stayed in the town for one year. That would be the 1859-1860 school, school year. year. Yes. That's right. Now, at the end of that year, there was an examination for places in Minota, only three places for students from the Klein Dices at the time. And um, 64 uh, applicants, 64 students sat for the examination. Now, Antar Pader himself came fourth in the examination. You'd say I had a look, just but missed that, out. just yes. missed out. Yes. But there was a bonus in that he got a free place in the college for the school year 1860 61. 61. Yes. Correct. And at the end of that year, he led the examination and uh, sailed smoothly through Manute College. Yes. You know, very little in the college, I believe, to suggest that he was uh, extraordinary in any way. Yes. Um, you did mention yourself yes. while ago, John, yes? yes that uh, Father uh, Ashby, Ash, Ash McHale himself had a few words. <laughs> they had a few words. Yes. They had a few words. He was able to stand up for himself. Yes. And of course, Bishop McHale, or yes. Archbishop McHale, was well able to stand up for yes. himself, yes. indeed. He has not mentioned the literature, the Irish literature. Right, right. He had a deep love for Irish and the Irish literature and culture, um, you know, from a very early age. And clearly in Minota, that came came, came through all right. Yes. 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 And you have seven years in Minota. Seven years in Minota, yes. yes. He did, yes. Um, I, in a way, his appointments gave him uh, an opportunity to study and uh, an opportunity to follow his, his great love, yes. his great love of Irish and Irish culture and, and writing. Yes. 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 We're very grateful to your father and wife. You, here you're facing St. Flannan's later on. We are meeting St. Flannan's today, John, and all we can say at the moment is that we are hopeful yes. and, um, you know, Yes. We may be surprised. Well, we wish you the best of luck and got to meet John, you John, thank you then. very much indeed. And Dan, jo, you're very welcome. Uh, uh, and thanks very much for taking the trouble to do this great walk. Yes, yes. God you bless you me. both. Tommy Takansanish or Vansko Koklash Kalmain, a Manistrar Mui, Augusta Kashlani Lehan, Shustigin. Augusta Sargora Makan Sota and Shepel in Er Onif and Kanonak and Tresha Dernak Dahil. Hanishensa Erin Neula Deora Hoktiog Octo Ne Stolen. Yeah, Tignoka Hain, Augusta the Varshan Sagari, Milanagas the Fair. So in the second part, part of the new week, Montour and
situation down at the hill and so. On it's on so so stable so a the couple on the hard pedder got a little law the hill on other situations of roast you know the glaive on tefran so she pale and so in echoing. Um, our it's a shen nose and we have only a word of mouth um, version of on the hard pedder. We can gather that he was um, a man uh, fair or no suck that kept quite a lot to himself and was quite strict on his altar boys and woe betide on any of them that smiled or smirked on the altar. It's on a scrive she on uh, on scale on scale fein. Um, the gano kept on um, on the uh, media. Got in art again, Ella. I scrive she a muskel fein. I can't hear she on on earinga. It's on show I scrive she. Tashi kora ha sonuigan show. Necklace and necklace and necklace and chapel. He uh, was a man with uh, very little communication with the people around him. He spoke and kept to himself very very much. His sermons were very hard um, uh, nosek. He rarely spoke to the people. Generally speaking, he was a man that didn't appear to be liked very much because he didn't mix very well. I suppose that went with the fact that he was uh, extremely of Thomas Fad Norwegian show. Um, we have very little knowledge of him, at least I have very little knowledge of him other than that, that he always uh, wore a black hat. That was his um, status symbol. Yes. And he was very much um you better cut it there now. Can you uh, one, what could one say about him really except that he was a man that didn't communicate very well with the people. Yes. Well of course his devotion to the writing would be the cause of that I suppose, more or less. Probably it yes. was. Obviously he knew enough about the people to be able to write as he did. Yes. His um books were definitely a uh, a, a great feature of revival for the Irish language. I was it ha on quid gaeling than arch of fourth. Ni lauter fuckle gaeling more himpel na hata. Octasiani yes gang gaeling a vuna in some skull in some skull and shot. On tradition is ta on growing na pasti than gaeling. I was lauren she lauren she and she had on tanga galiata. I was kiheska sarag and she had on skull na shunta. This told him got ni ni on ni rod gnaak e shin the lot on you bound. The end got will crit and crit went to the other chilish. Nearly the carcoiling is. Nearly the gum tashi and verga gummish. Ah, nearly should be into gold the gakla. I was the untalling cassorts. The Honorable Gum Grave. Yet a tepale. I was some fear of it. It's life loathing. I was told to do doing well. And for her and then told us to hope to do Rodan Rodan Fiog. 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 Rodan the Montor, a going a Wallace, a Conacham Temple, or Killian Cronin, Don Lotuma, August Bian Gwelling, Goflushaka Gay, August uh, Montor, Gwelge, um, Anava, uh, 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 August Ta on Gwelling, the Ruta Gominish, yeah, 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 Ak an tahar Philip Ock Hegarty an an Saga Poroste an Shaw Nish Ock Nilch an Shaw an an Amsham. 
an tahar pether ta olas belgani an olas agam mariolair agus sin maskeil fein agus other laurella is a scrive she i kalash te kolomani an manishar armi again ta ta on Tar Pather came here in in uh, February 1891 and was here until he died on the 21st of March 1921 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, yes. 1920 yeah, 1920 um, and during his time here he wrote Mushkel Fein and um, Many other books, Many other books yeah. and uh, was a tremendous influence, I gather, on the revival of the Irish language and at that particular time in the history of uh, this part of the country. Um, okay. Other than that, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to, to uh, delve too deeply into his uh, priesthood here in Castle Lyons, uh, other than bits and pieces that I picked up. And you've just spoken with uh, uh, Patricia Fuhi, who is a local teacher here and who did some research uh, when she was in the training college in Limerick into his life and his times here and uh, who has given some information into his his lifestyle and uh, the work he did here in Castle Lyons while he was here. He lived just about a half mile from here in the parish priest's house which is now occupied by the retired, recently retired parish priest uh, Father Fitzgerald. Uh, I understand that this is a stable over here just on my right uh, uh, which has been renovated somewhat now, uh, was where he s where he stabled his horse, and uh, this is the church that he. Um, I understand that he was a bookish person, and I also understand that he only celebrated mass at the parish church on Sundays. I'm open to correction here, but I've picked up little bits of information in that he normally said mass privately in his own home, yes. where he had a little private chapel and uh, didn't mix too too much with the people as such but did a lot of his research and his writings in his own home um, other than that as if apart from the, the historic uh, impact that he has made on the irish language and irish literature and the impact that he made here in castle lines i'm afraid i can't say that i know too much more about him other than that his grave is just around here the, the, at the uh, uh, southwest side of the church and uh, he's, he's buried there and uh, from time to time I see people coming to visit his grave and obviously it's somewhat I suppose for people who are appreciative of, of his work in Irish literature uh, it's a place of pilgrimage to a degree I would imagine. Yes. Um, Neil Moran Ella Leragomanish. Took a good doing. I guess I'm in fear for you. There's been talking concert, but they know an art. Go and eat being on toilets again. I guess I'm in fear for you. Got a meal of maggots. And so I'm to fear hast and she pale at a oig. I'm to fear and so I guess I'm in cheese. Nish nish kongori da I guess kiche. Mwyn tair. Mwyn tair chyslaan i li hain dy chyr yn lach sa er uig an tahar pedr o leir ac canonach. Conachina dy fwy nhw y dyf a yl sychd drastl se ghoiv er fag dem lian y sfihe. Y gwrs i crai fwchta lian agos grada dyr dochys. Dyg an tain o lo erihid dy farta milanedi o gfehe er ysh fig de gyrif a anam. We now have the honour and the privilege of meeting with Mrs. Smith of Mahara, mm -hmm. the last living link with Antar Pader. Mrs. Smith 
knew on her father later in her young days, and she will now tell us her memories of him. Yes, I was, uh, I was a neighbor of his, and I, and I often met him and got books from him. And I had, uh, he gave me the four Gospels in Irish and the Imitation of Christ, and they're, they're gone now. And uh, he used to write for the uh, an Irish messenger, sacred messenger too. Yes. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't many of them though. That was in Timaragueilach. Hmm. On Timaragueilach. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What kind of man was he? Was he a big man or a small man? A small man. Yes. He was, and he used to say that that was good to be small. Yes. Yes. He liked <laughs> because. Him small. He used to say when the fishermen put out, isn't it, to catch the fish, he caught a lot of fish, but all the small fellows got away. Very good. And the big fellows were caught. So he had a sense of humor too. Yeah. He had, yes. Yeah. And his influence still remains in the parish, I believe. Yeah. People yeah. are very given to the Irish language and uh, very fond yeah, of it. Yeah. And we were speaking to a teacher a while ago, and she told us it was very easy to teach Irish to the children in this parish. I suppose it is now. That's what she says, it is. Yes. Yeah. Well, we didn't get that chance at all. Yes. They uh, weren't teaching the Irish as much that time, That's in my time. Yes. They weren't, yes. That's what they are now. Yeah. You knew his housekeeper as well, did you? Oh, I did, sure. Yeah. Katie Sullivan. Yes. She was from McCroom, too. Is that so? Yeah. yeah. Is and although right? I don't think she had any Irish. Yes. And his sister, Miss O'Leary, was living with him. Yes. Can you remember the night before he died? On the night before he died, Roy wasn't up there that night, but uh, he said to his housekeeper anyway, about 10 o'clock on that night, I'd know where will I be this tenth man night, Katie, she said. I'm afraid you'll be with God, she said. Don't say you're afraid I'll be with God, she said. Say you hope I'll be with God. Very good. Yeah. And he was died next morning, then Sunday morning, at second mass time. Yes. The priest was called out and to tell him, and he prayed for him there and then. At the mass? Yeah. Yes. You were at a funeral, I suppose? I was. Was there a big crowd there? No, no there was. Sure, there was a very big crowd. Oh, should they shouldered him up to the cross and brought it back again then? Yes. Uh, God, he'd regret what for the Irish, you know, Yes. The Irish difference. language. And he wrote in the language of the people. Huh? He wrote in the language of the people, yes. not in the classical Irish, yes. and that was one of the greatest advantages yes. because the ordinary people were able to read what you they were. and appreciate it. They were. And you had, he gave you two books, you say, The Imitation of Christ, Irish of Christ, and uh, Four Gospels. The Four Gospels, yes. Walter's Fowl, Denian, had the last of them, where all they are now, we know sure he is dead. And and the rocks under his bus. I suppose so, yes. Yeah. So it was my that gave, uh, gave them to Father Denian. Yes. I mean, I don't know how they're known. You made some things for him? Did you make some clothes for him? Huh? Did you make some things for him, some clothes for him? Father, my word. Did you make some clothes for him? Oh, did I make some clothes? I did. Yes. I did. Could you tell us about it? What's that I made now? It was something for the, for the altar. Vestments, is it? Vestments, um, yes. Yes. And altar cloths as well. Huh? And altar cloths as well, I believe. Yes. Yes. You were a great woman with the needle saw? I was. Yes, that's very nice. That's how I was, that's yes. right. 
Did he mix much with the people around? He did. He used to walk around a lot. But he'd like always to meet someone that could speak an Irish to him. I see. And Mr. O'Leary then, his sister was the same. Yes. They'd like to meet someone outside, someone that could they could talk to in Irish. Yes. And this, uh, Miss O'Leary, she was going down there, the, where he's living up in the hill. He was going down one day, and there was an old woman coming up. And, uh, of course, Miss O'Leary talked to us, be nice to have a, a chat with her, you know, that yes. she'd be able to speak the Irish. So she got a talk. Yes. She, said, <laughs> she spoke in Irish to this old woman anyway, and the answer she got is, why then I could speak English as good as yourself. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose she hadn't any Irish. <laughs> <laughs> she mightn't have any yes, Irish. Yes. She might have that too, you know. Yes. But she was afraid that Miss O'Leary thought that she couldn't speak the English. Yes. And that's how she took her. she spoke to her And she wanted her to see that she could speak the English. Yes, yes. Have you any other memories now of him? I should have some stories sure to meet him very often. I had books from him and the four gospels and the imitation of Christ, yes. and I don't know where they are now. Yes. His father Daniel had the last of them, I'm sure he is dead now. He drove around in his horse and trap, is it? To the pony, pony and trap. And trap yeah. Pony and trap, yes. yeah. And he stabled the pony. And he had a bicycle one time. Is that so? Yeah. Yes. But mostly the pony and trap. Mostly the pony and trap. Yes. And we saw the stable near the church where he kept uh, the pony while he was saying uh, mass. Yes. Yes. Well, no, it was lovely speaking to you and hearing from you, especially when you knew him personally. Yes. You're the only person we met who has known him personally. I suppose I am the mm. only one uh, now yes. that and knew him. We are very, very thankful to you for giving us your oh, time yes. and it's your, your mm. fine, yes, fine sure. memory for your yes, that was golden pleasure. years. Yeah. It was marvellous to think that you can remember these things oh, so clearly. I can. And we are very, very thankful to you. I can remember him as if it was only yesterday yes. we were talking to him. Yes, it's marvellous to have that fine yeah, memory. I can. At this age, yes. Well, now we'll, we'll say good. thank you very much. Uh, and no, she's goodbye. not saying for nothing. Yeah. He was an old man when I knew him, saw him in Dublin in yes. the 1930s, early 30s. Huh? That's what I now used to come Yeah, They were yeah. friendly with him. This is a copy of the genealogy of the O'Leary's, starting in 1649 and going along up to the time he went to Maynooth in 1861. It corresponds very closely to the account and Tyre Pather himself gives us a genealogy in Muskeel Fane. This is another very interesting item I received from Father Troy of Canturk. He has in his possession the manuscript of the Todd Book of Sheana, and this is a copy of a page of it. It, it is the, in the handwriting of entire Pather himself, and it's quite obvious that it's, it's quite like the one we saw in Conroy Museum. Here you have Thresh, Clownus Hive, August Cormac, and Bob and Lasse, Norm Talker characters in this in the book Shana. Here we have a picture of the committee who organized the celebrations in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the death of Antar Pader in 1970. A very fine area was held in the castle grounds and just run through quickly the people involved. Mihala Moraku and Go Gaelach, Ear Advisor Er Skull, a car skull, a hoste. Shemus and Winnicon, Benak Delish, Corlor Conte, Colluil, O Gottenskart, the Colle. Unseen at Myong, Paddy Moxinge, Oktran Dive Skull of Osgri Elang, Montor Nashunta, Vishamar Vuntorgum Fain, or Visaranga Do, Ox Avert in Nian. And her Donald Okrahur, a tarnish in the Hagar Froste, er 
til de andre. Vi har dem alene på nøkdelig. Vi er i det gørlinge og så om å krame. Og så vun rent var gørlinge da så lesj. Vi fin. En konfert om å rekå. Vi er en konfert om å gårde i en sak. Skal det være en himmelig gøst og gørling. Kun bare om å rekå. Og så vann kjele. Grev menn skal det ha mye annen gørig. Samtidig i varekå. Ta en rån i kaldt kaldt hår i eren. Og så går en gjør mån. Og så er kjele. Ni la kasig i nisj. Mihal og Kronle, Michael Kranich, er vi en åktoran i den tennet. Skjøm og så skje, men aktuelle skjer vi en advarsel er kærskål ved langværig, og snist den ene er kærskål ved kramet. Skjørsje, veilig da er kall og vil. Mihal og Kronin, beile hår ved lidelse, og så en garde og kønig. Og hvis fem er det dårlig, og det er pæder, og det er fæn, og det er stoppet til en skri, og det er ikke, og det er ikke, og det er ikke. Og hvis det er en skarm i liv, og hvis det er mor og hvis det er en sånn, og 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 det er feil. Det er en bedrøst, og det er ikke nemme, og det er en sånn, og det er en sånn, og det er en sånn, Museum Kilwere, Benny Yassone, Museum Vakrama, Mihal Odingin, Christian Museum, Antaher Obrien, Sjagert Proeste, Klundrahid, Andrar Fjönbara, Mänskollen Herr Pader, Antaher Otrehe, Kjön Tyrk, Mönterli Hain, Dyrnamone, Antaher O Korkre, Olof, Ygolajste Kolomain, Mönisch Trer Mui, Antaher Obroder, Kastlan i Lihain Padregin i Uhig i den nasjonen til Kastlan i Lihain Ben Vik Gawen Mahara Kastlan i Lihain Agus Don Lokeleker Færden Kamera Agus Oemsje Sjana Hakiring Slan Agus Benakti Øreføler